you look at mainstream science. It's a religion. David Icke promises 11 simple rules to become a master researcher and find suppressed knowledge. Sounds great, doesn't it? But hang on a second. He also says that mainstream science is just a religion with too many rules. So what exactly are his 11 steps to the truth? Let's find out because it seems more than likely that there's just gonna be 11 ways to reject facts and ignore proof. So uh, let's get this rolled on the show, shall we? Shut up and sit down, you big bald f Please subscribe. I've been asked to do this, I sh uh, this show for Iconic. Um, to go through a series of points, there's 11 actually. We'll get to your 11 points in just a second. Aren't you the owner of Iconix or did you ask yourself to make this video? <laughs> that I think um, from my experience now over 35 years of doing this. 35 years of doing what? Giving people misinformation. And I know that's gonna upset some of you watching this now. Yeah, I know he's got one or two things right, but just remember, he did claim to be the son of God on the Terry Wogan show. They're laughing at you. They're not laughing with you. Um, a very important to know for those that are either new to this or quite new to this. And when you say new to this, I'm guessing you mean new to lizard people and the Illuminati. And it might <laughs> also operate as a bit of a reminder for those that have been on this, on this path for a, a longer period, that actually... Ooh, this is a rather unfortunate place to pause Dave's video. <laughs> the basic foundations of journalism uh, never change and we can get to a point where you become so used to giving your opinion and saying how things are that you forget that there has to be evidence to credibly back up what you're saying. And does that need to be the same quality of evidence as the evidence you think you have that proves that the world's leaders are lizard people? And here is point number one. No preconceived belief that cannot be questioned. This is a biggie. And it's right that I should start with this because in so many ways, from this, everything else comes. You know, we need some humility based on the acknowledgement that we don't know it all, <laughs> and actually, we don't know much. Then why are you all over the internet acting like you do know everything? Now, I do agree with you when you say that if you already believe in something and you find evidence that proves you wrong, you have to accept it and change your mind. But the problem with that line of thinking is that most conspiracy theorists lack the basic requirements to have their minds changed. You thought I was going to say they lack a mind altogether, didn't you? Naughty. Hello? Where is everybody? I'm, I'm the only brain cell left. If you've got a preconceived belief and you treat it like a no-go area that you just won't question, you'll miss the truth that's right in front of you. Just look at flat earthers. You could send one of them up to the ISS and they'd still find a way of claiming that the earth isn't a globe. So at best, he's being a little bit hypocritical. And just because he's been right once or twice, that doesn't mean he's right about everything. Remember, a broken clock is right twice a day. Now, if you are genuinely seeking the truth of what's happening, of how things are, the one thing you must never, 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 never have is no-go areas. Because how, how do you know that those areas you won't go into don't have the very truth that you're looking for? 
Okay, so I can see where this is heading. You're going to say that people who don't believe the same as you suffer from cognitive dissonance, so people like me and most of my audience. And that's fine, sticks and stones and all that. But what does that make somebody like you, or any other conspiracy theorist for that matter? Well, in my humble opinion, for what it's worth, it makes you all intellectually lazy. Because what I'm going to come to in a second is religion. And my father had a phrase, he used to talk about bricks and mortar religion. And, and there is a, a, a version of religion that's bricks and mortar. It's, it's temples and mosques and synagogues and all that stuff. But if you look at the structure of religion, it can be applied right across human society. You know, we think Christianity, oh, that's a religion. Hinduism, religion. Islam, religion. Politics, oh no, that's politics. No, it's a freaking religion. You look at mainstream science. It's a religion. Is it what? I haven't really been listening. <laughs> what, what do we see with mainstream science? No-go areas everywhere. I've come across it so many times in my life where they have a certain orthodoxy that's the religious orthodoxy. That's the political religious orthodoxy. And they won't go anywhere that is outside that orthodoxy. So uh, basically, mainstream science is a five sense orthodoxy. Can I see it, touch it, taste it, all that stuff, then it must exist then. Scientists already know that humans have more than five senses. We've got senses for balance, for pain, and for knowing where our arms are and our legs in space without actually looking at them. Secondly, science actually studies things we can't sense. Think about x-rays. You can't see them or taste them and radio waves. You can't touch them or smell them. But scientists prove these things existed by building tools and instruments that go far beyond what the human body can do. If science only cared about the five senses, we wouldn't have telescopes, microscopes or Geiger counters. And if that's not what you were getting at at all, well I'm sorry and please carry on. And anything that's outside of that orthodoxy is paranormal. Ooh. So the overwhelming scientific and sceptical consensus is that virtually all, if not 100% of all paranormal claims can easily be explained by natural phenomena, or psychological factors, even hoaxes. There's a really good reason why nobody, not a single person, ever claimed the $1 million prize that the Randy Foundation had in place for decades. But I'm sure that somebody like Mr. Iker doesn't even acknowledge that little factoid because it sounds to me from the things he's saying that he's no better than any other science denier. Think flat earth or moon landing denier because he's sitting there recording a video and publishing it using things that we only have thanks to mainstream science. So you see this, um, this blueprint of religion everywhere. And then you look at, well, bricks and mortar religion. And so much of the alternative media, citizen journalism, is based on a Christian belief system, which is fair enough. You know, you believe what you like. But there are consequences. And then you've got others that, you know, are Islamic or whatever, Hindus. And what do all those things have in common? Hmm, I'm going to have to give this some serious thought, people. Is it that they all believe in things that aren't real? You know, like you do. <laughs> Climate change. It's another bloody religion. And religion itself. Well, no, I'd agree with you that religion is most definitely a religion, but climate change? Hmm. What do they have in common? No-go areas. You see it all the time. So, people like me, who um, have no religion, have no um, no no-go areas, we kind of tend to upset loads of different people 
because I'll tell you why you upset so many people and I will also show you that you do have no go areas. So for example, climatologists, you're basically saying that they're all liars. So there's one group of people you've upset, scientists. And your no go area is reality, David. Let's be honest about it. You're just in cloud cuckoo land. If you um, look at uh, what I call the mainstream of alternative journalism, the alternative media, any area of research that would question the Christian belief system, no go area, won't go there, not, not even gonna look. And it will be the same with Islam, it will be the same with Hinduism. A mainstream uh, um, scientist won't go there into what's called the paranormal. Oh no, I can't explain it, so therefore it can't be happening. Yeah, but that's just a load of old crap, isn't it? Science is constantly trying to help us understand things that we know nothing about. And what it means is there's all these unexplored areas of life and uh, human society that not that they are denied, but what, that which they deny themselves. Now, I don't want to be Captain Obvious here, but you think that might just be because if there's no evidence to support a thing, then science isn't really interested in that thing. So, I... Uh, I see people in the alternative media saying we, we must stand for freedom. We must uh, have freedom of speech and freedom of thought. But at the same time, they're denying themselves those very things. Yeah, freedom of speech is a thing. Like, for example, I'm free to say that I think you were a complete nut job, but I'm trying not to at the moment. Remember, attack the ideas, not the person. But freedom of speech isn't free of consequences, depending on what you say, obviously. Because their freedom of thought is only up to the limit of their religious belief. And their freedom of speech is only up to the limit of their religious belief. And, you know, if you're searching for something and there's great areas that you won't go to search for it, if that something is in those areas, you're never going to find it. You're going to go round and round and round and round. You're never going to find this truth that you're looking for because you won't go where it is. Do you know another thing that's always baffled me with people like David Icke? They claim that they've got this secret knowledge that's, that's so heavily guarded and protected by the mainstream that nobody knows about it. But how do they know then? What gives them this special knowledge that they claim people like you and I don't have? And you know, my observation anyway, people with these rigid belief systems, one of the reasons they won't go into these areas I'm talking about that challenge the belief system is because they're frightened of what they might find. So, what have we learned? Well, for a start, David, I can't count. He said 11 things that make you a master researcher and then spent the entire video talking about one of them. Maybe you should have done a little bit of research before hitting record. Don't forget to like the smash button and subscribe if you're new. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you again in the next video. Love you, bye. Out of everything that's on the internet, this is the best thing.
Right, I think everyone's gone now. There will be a joke, but I know by this point in the video, the only people left are the people who actually like everything I do. So, I wanted to invite you to take part in a channel review which I'm running over on my Discord server. Basically, what I want you to do is watch a playlist of 10 videos, two are from two years ago, two are from 18 months ago, two are from 12 months ago, and so on and so forth, finishing with two recent videos. Then what I want you to do is fill in a Google form that I've created and basically tear me a new one. I'm just trying to figure out if I'm the problem causing these absolutely awful views or if it's YouTube, YouTube in. So if you are interested in participating, then join my Discord server, which is linked in the description and send me a DM on there. Then I will add you to a private group in my Discord server and it'll really help me out a lot. I've got to figure this out. Anyway, I used to think I was indecisive and maybe that's the problem with my channel. But now that I've said it out loud, I'm not so sure. <laughs> I don't think so. No, 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 no. I don't think so. No, 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 no. It's never, ever, 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 ever 